So hi, I just saw a video on the Prada effect on TikTok and there were a few things that I found a little bit troubling that I wanted to talk about today. First and foremost, this video in general and a lot of other videos that kind of are around that topic on TikTok are quite strange, especially when you look at the comment section. Girlfriend, stop! We will get to that a bit later. Right now, I'm going to just explain what the hell the Prada effect even is. By Prada effect, I do not mean Prada's 50s look in the 80s or their commentary on Italian fashion of 30s and 40s or anything like that. I'm talking about what is discussed in this particular TikTok. And Eastern Europe opened up. When that block fell down and scouts started going into Eastern Europe, that's when it started to change. You had models who were all the same height, all the same race, and all the same Prada shape. Effect. It happened to Calvin, it happened to Jill Sander, and he would just have these parades of white girls. Your Prada is that she basically said, all right, I just want all the girls to look alike. I think there's a lot of people that I noticed in the comment section that were kind of uh, creeping me out a little bit in, in terms of their reactions to all of that. First and foremost, they always say, there's a lot of comments that say things like, oh, I wish we would go back to that. They say things like Eastern European models, they just knew how to work. They were so much more hardworking and other things like that. And as much as I, like, I do think that those models were hardworking, I'm not here to take that away from them or anything like that. I just want to talk about the modeling industry in general and the Prada effect and how it affects people since I am from a place that is oftentimes targeted by scouts and other things like that I kind of thought that we should talk about this I just saw like a mini documentary yesterday on this topic and the documentary literally focused on the city that I'm from so to me this whole thing was all too familiar there's a lot of hopes that kind of came to be in the early 2000s and in the 2010s, mostly because of the success of Natalia Vadanova. There's just a lot of shit that goes on in terms of behind the scenes. First and foremost, this is an industry that siphons a lot of money off of people. Like knowing that two out of 10, for example, or one out of 10 would actually have a chance of working at all, even in Asian markets, no, I'm not even talking about European markets. Um, they kind of scout people knowing that a lot of them are, they're not like serious about and they just want them to pay for headshots, for classes on walking, on posing, like to pay for photo shoots, other things like that to build a portfolio, right? And then they will kind of say, well, we did not get any offers for you or we don't have anybody interested in um, hiring you in any market. It is what it is, right? Those people that run those centers, they never lose money they either get girls paying for those classes for those photo shoots and everything or they get those girls paying and then they get commissions of the, those girls making money i had experience of a lot of my friends being scouted i've been scouted myself too but i knew that i was too short for for working in the industry and i'm also not the type of person who would starve myself or anything like that and I also realized later in my life that I like control over everything in terms of production and I'd rather be in positions of a creative director or something like that where I actually have an influence on everything rather than be told what to do. I really don't like being told what to do and I think that this job is definitely one of those industries that are very difficult to exist in if you have any sort of um, opinion on anything. Like you have to just kind of keep it to yourself the entire time and I just don't really want to do that. The worst parts of this industry is the fact that everyone was scouted very young and by very young I don't even mean 16 18 and I don't even mean 14 I mean literally 12 that was I mean maybe I was even 11 when I got my first you know card I think I was probably 11 and also my friends were also getting scouted at around that time if they were you know being scouted and um, you're literally a child your understanding of what is possible is obviously not very well established the worst part of it all is that um, there are terrible agencies that are basically lying to people that they are even a uh, you know, a modeling agency. There are a lot of modeling agencies that are actually, you know, scouting and everything. However, there's a lot of predatory people in the in any industry really, but in this industry specifically, 
because they are looking for children to exploit. They are looking for someone so young that it would be extremely easy to get them to do anything. Um, there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of random shit that happens, like you would come to a class for walking or whatever, or for like taking photographs, and they'll start doing really random shit where they would be telling you to act provocatively or to pose in a more sexual way or whatever because they are genuinely making everyone look like they are grown women you probably notice that in a lot of images of models from that era where you would be looking at a picture and this woman looks like she's 25 and then you look at the actual age of the model and she's like 13 and it's all because like they put tons of makeup on them and they make them pose in a way that would be very fucked up for a child to be in because they scout girls so young they are basically scouting them at a time where they should be in school right so if they actually win a contract or anything like that they have to leave in the middle of the year i had friends who would leave school to go and model and the worst part is that you don't make that much money and even if you are one of the lucky ones who actually starts making money and that's such a small fraction genuinely the problem is that you have to pay so much for accommodations and other shit like that that at the end of the day it's not that much money anyway but it is money and and the thing is oftentimes they scout not only in siberia but they like to go to very very small villages you know where everything is broken down and like they find families that are in a very very dire situation and they offer something sometimes they straight up lie about what they're offering and those children are going abroad without any supervision from their parents with a bunch of people who make money off of them and who it's in their interest to abuse them so of course they do it because there's so many horrible people around now check out this clip here during the soviet union you know when once you got your education everything was planned you get your degree then you do this job you get this standard salary so hardly anybody challenged that it was a very stable, boring lifestyle. But these younger girls, they don't want that. They're far more creative. They want to be someone in life, unlike their mothers. With so much money on offer and the girls being so young, I can't help but wonder if people ever take advantage of them. So these other agencies then, are they essentially setting these girls up to be escorts? Uh, no, no, no. What they do is they find uh, wealthy boyfriends for these girls. He goes, no, of course it's not escorting. They find them rich boyfriends. Okay. This guy pissed me off to no end when I was watching this. I was like, God, it's just, he's so sleazy. I want to punch him. Like, he just pisses me off so much. Just looking at him makes me angry. <sighs> it's just so sad there were so many opportunities before perestroika in 90 in 1992 and now he tries to portray everything in this way honestly this is the rhetoric that's out there the past 30 years or so you know like this guy this dickhead who's exploiting children who is genuinely out there to send little girls abroad in situations where they are very likely to be abused we were giving them an opportunity in life to become someone, to do something more important. So would you do I this? I mean, what, what would the girl do in Krasnoyarsk? We have to understand one thing, that for a Russian to go abroad in general, even as a tourist, is a huge advantage because they need visas literally to go anywhere. So it's a great opportunity for their daughters. Of course, he's capitalist favorite because he just writes their dick so well. He doesn't mind doing the most horrific things to these girls, sending them wherever, absolutely ruining their health, ruining their chances of having a good education or anything like that because they have skipped school to go and do this. And all for his benefit, his profit, right? A savior, my ass. The problem with all of this is obviously the exploitation, right? It's obviously the fact that girls are getting paid next to nothing. It's also the fact that sometimes girls get agencies that are or, or, you know, managers that are absolutely fucking insane, like crazy, you know, who take their passports. That was like a, a thing that I heard that happened quite often with those types of managers or agencies where they would send these girls abroad who are like from 12 to 16 or 18, right? And they would take their passports and tell them that you will not go back home. You won't be allowed to go back home 
if you don't work and if you don't do this or that. And sometimes, obviously, that would in really bad situations that involved SW in general, right? So, yeah, but you have tickets, then flight per month. You don't understand what is the contract. You don't have a lawyer. All you have is 10%. So you're making a lot of money, but you never get them. Some girls, they don't know what to do, and they put themselves in trouble. What sort of troubles, I mean? They actually selling the girls uh, for guys, you know, just to hang out with these guys and they paint to the bookers. Some girls, because they're scared, because people say, I will not give you a passport, you will not go to your motherland, you have to make money and you have to find a way to make money. And it's the reality, real reality of this fashion industry. It's just so like gross to me that this era is glamorized because of these reasons, but we also have to talk about the fact that so many comments un like under those videos are so fat phobic and most of all so creepy eugenicated girl like <laughs> just just the most shit you've ever fucking seen and that's the thing that i kind of hate as someone who is eastern european is that oftentimes some people who seem to be you know like normal acting normal with you are sometimes like way too comfortable thinking that like you think that they just complimented you complimented your like hair or your skin or i don't know whatever it is you know you just think that it's a compliment and then you kind of find out that they are actually a very terrible person who like has some like white supremacy bullshit going on in their heads very very creepy there's a lot of this weird attitude in the west going on as well where i honestly wouldn't wish it on my wo like worst enemy to be one of those girls who are, were sent uh, abroad in that kind of manner i mean those of them who got lucky who actually got to work with big companies with big brands or whatever i hope that their experience wasn't horrible there's so many shitty people out there it's kind of crazy i honestly it's, it's very disappointing when i was watching this clips yesterday to just kind of prepare for this video to like freshen up my memory you know i was just getting so angry and it's just not good for me it's just not good for me to be watching any of that it's just fucking sad in general because nobody it's also like one of those things where even this journalist when they go and report on these things the way that they act and everything sometimes can be a little disrespectful too. the way that they look at people that they report on it's kind of like it's not even pity but it's just something so gross about it and um and this whole like attitude of like as if they are some kind of saviors when in reality the reason why those girls even need like saving from those dire situations is because of their countries there's obviously a lot of girls from all around the globe who have been exploited by the fashion industry and honestly fashion industry needs a, like a bit of a check-in someone needs to whip it into shape from time to time because i think that because of what fashion looks like from the outside because of how glamorous it is in quotations a lot of things get kind of kind of slip under the radar a lot of things are just kind of covered up for the sake of keeping the facade you know looking perfect i just think that all of this is incredibly shallow incredibly disturbing and i genuinely hate everything about people who function like this guy or like many other brands and companies and stuff like that it's just very gross and obviously exploitation of women is not like something new but I just think that we should maybe think a little bit more about things that we are glamorizing. Obviously, those models worked really hard. There's no doubt about it. But I personally just think that I don't think anyone wants to go somewhere and not be able to speak their language or participate in their own culture or anything like that. It's just kind of a thing that you're forced into. Sometimes even when you do want to travel or you do want to work in this environment, you know, in this industry, you don't want to be working in those environments. You don't want to be working in an abusive environment. And it's just disturbing to me that it's very, very young girls, girls who wouldn't even understand right from wrong because they're so young and um, this whole Prada effect seems quite strange because Muji Prada just wanted to have her work be the focus point 
of the runways but i feel like it's a little bit like that's why she was getting you know a lot of similar looking girls and and why there was like a problem with a lot of white models being used like 80 percent, for example in some uh runway shows or whatever but i also think that those people who would get distracted by the celebrity of a model are not people who would understand your work if those garments were on somebody who's not well known those people who get distracted by a celebrity are not going to be paying that much attention to your collections or to your work in general anyway i don't know why there was even a conversation about this in general i'm not sure if this is just a stereotype that kind of was really forced upon mutia but I, I don't I don't know. I think this entire thing is freaky. As much as I would have wanted to talk about it in really great detail, I also just get very angry talking about it. And I really don't feel like having fights with people in the comments or anything like that. I just wanted to mention this because as someone who is Eastern European and in is in the West, I wanted to talk about it a bit because you need to cut that shit out and especially cut that shit out in terms of uh, being white supremacist or being racist or being fat phobic and for some reason thinking that fetishizing Eastern European girls and like trying to interact with them is something that we want. If you're one of those people, like we don't, just saying. <laughs> I am working on a bunch of things, the podcast, obviously, I have been teasing it for a while, I know. I just want to have a few episodes lined up so I can, you know, keep up with the schedule. So season two is coming, there are new pictures for the season for season two, new banner, everything. And um, I'm also working on another project that is about a fashion art exhibit. And another big thing is coming next week i'm very excited about it let me know if you have any experience with this modeling industry and um, what do you think about the fact that education needs to be interrupted thank you to my patrons and i'll see you guys next time bye